Hello, Reading community. So we're going to start today by speaking about some updates that are happening across our district and then move into some shout outs to recognize some of the great things happening in our district. So to start in terms of an update, Veterans Day this week was celebrated across all of our schools. We know that Veterans Day is a day that uh, holds special meaning to so many of our students, staff, and families in our Reading community. I'd like to turn it over to our Parker Assistant Principal, Mr. Jay Pledge, who's going to speak a little bit about what this vet, what Veterans Day means to him, both personally and professionally. Thank you, Dr. Milicheski. I'm proud and honored to represent my family in our town for this occasion. Military families are very important to me, in part because I'm part of one. My two youngest brothers actively serve in the U.S. Army. Over their time of service, they have deployed to Afghanistan and elsewhere in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Inherent Resolve, and Operation Freedom Sentinel. Beyond deployments, there are other times when they've had to be apart from their family, including their own wives and children. Missed holidays and birthdays are just some of the sacrifices our military families make. I saw this often as a teacher at Hanska Middle School that sits on Hanscom Air Force Base not too far from here. My students were all military dependents, and there would be times when their mother or father had to be apart from them, or they had to pack up and move to their parents' next station, or they would enter our school midway through the year. I grew to appreciate strongly and respect the resilience of my students for what they endured to support their parents, and by extension, all of us. Taking this job in Reading seemed a fitting transi a transition, as I know our schools have a strong tradition of recognizing and honoring our veterans. Our town's high school is dedicated to those who have given their lives in military service to our country. Walter S. Parker, my school's namesake, was a Civil War veteran. And Josh Wheaton Jr., the namesake of one of our elementary schools, was the lone Reading soldier killed in the Revolutionary War. As we recognize and honor our veterans, we must also pause to recognize individuals who have been overshadowed by these recognitions. Cato Eaton, enslaved by Josh Eaton Sr., was one of 10 enslaved men of Reading who enlisted in the Continental Army and fought for the freedom of our country, including in those enslaved like them. Bacchus, Cato Eaton, Israel Eaton, Caesar Freeman, Doss Freeman, Jonas Freeman, Sharper Freeman, Caesar Gray, Jack Green, Edmund Thomas, Caesar Wyman, all fought. This day is their day too. So please, this Veterans Day, remember the sacrifices made by all veterans and their families and reflect on how we can each do our part to better our country just as they have done theirs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Pledge, for sharing that. And also a, a huge thank you and recognition to all of our uh, amazing veterans across our Reading community. We thank you for your incredible service to, uh, to our country and to our community. I'd like to talk about an upcoming event from our Friends of Reading Metco. Uh, so you'll see here the flyer. The Friends of Reading Metco is hosting our first family engagement event this year. And the event will take place on December 4th from 3 to 5 p.m. at Metco headquarters in Boston. Uh, and a little bit of context, the mission of the Friends of Reading Metco is to host events that will create opportunities for families from both Boston and Reading to build relationships. And the hope is that through these events, parents will network to build bonds and students will make lifelong friendships. These bonds will create more opportunities for families to participate in our parent partners program, allowing the students to take advantage of more activities in and out of school. So a huge thank you to all of those uh, who are helping to lead the Friends of Reading Metco and are also leading this exciting family uh, engagement activity. We have some updates this week from Mary Juliana related to COVID-19. So in the written updates that are uh, accompany this video update, you'll see two documents, one around updates uh, from Mary around sim uh, symptoms, test and stay, uh, and travel, and then also another, another document around uh, vaccination FAQs. So thank you, Mary, for putting those together for our community. Uh, Ms. Juliana also did want to share a uh, thank you to the entire community for the vaccination clinic that was put up uh, last week. 125 staff members were able to receive their boosters last week, and also over 70 students were able to receive their first uh, vaccination. So uh, Ms. Giuliano would like to give a special thanks to the Coolidge staff, um, to the facilities, to the custodial staff, to sub-nurses Lynn Dunn and Mary Ellen Kerwin, and the SROs for coming together as a team and helping to lead this for our community. So thank you to Ms. Giuliano for her leadership and everyone else who helped contribute to this clinic over the past couple of weeks. Uh, 
shifting gears a little bit, talking about reading. As you may know, at our November 4th school committee meeting, our administration outlined a plan uh, for creating a, a, an advisory committee made up of a broad group of stakeholders to help us think about how we can move literacy instruction and literacy outcomes forward in our district. So similar to the kind of the group that was compiled for our Portrait of the Graduate work, this work will be done collaboratively by educators, families, community partners. So I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Hardy, who's going to speak in a little bit more detail about, uh, about this work and about what the involvement we're looking for from the community. And I would just like to emphasize we are really excited about moving this work forward collaboratively. Thank you, Dr. Milicheski. We are excited to be sharing out the flyer with you today about the Reading and Reading Committee. As Dr. Milicheski said, we are looking for stakeholders um, across of our community. We are looking for educators here in the Reading Public Schools, and we're looking, of course, for families and guardians of our students to participate on this committee. The Reading and Reading Committee will act as a communication and planning partner with the Reading Public Schools Administration, identify areas of strength and areas in need of further improvement, collaboratively investigate additional supports and resources rooted in best practices, organize and share helpful information for families, and help the community move forward together. We're excited to announce kind of the first two ways that um, folks from our community can participate in, the, in this committee. We're going to hold an initial meeting on December 7th at the library at Reading Memorial High School from 4 to 5. This will be an overview session and everyone is welcome to attend this session. The goal of this session will be to really go into detail about the goals of the committee and outline the process, the time commitment. We encourage anyone to attend this meeting who thinks they might want to um, volunteer for this committee, folks who know they want to volunteer, or just anyone who's curious and wants to learn a little bit more. So everyone is welcome. We're gonna follow up that initial meeting with a second meeting, which will be held on December 21st from 6 to 7.30 p.m. This meeting will be virtual. And again, it will be open to everyone to participate, folks who want to volunteer to be on the committee or anyone who just wants to learn more and, and hear about the process. The focus of the second meeting will be to build a foundation about the latest research in the instruction of reading. And also, we will take a look at the current practices being used here in Reading to teach reading. Another thing you'll notice on the flyer is that there's a link to a form to express interest for serving on this committee. We're asking anyone who's interested in serving on the committee to sign up by December 23rd. You can certainly attend the first two meetings before you decide if you want to complete the form. That's why we're giving everyone a little bit of time to learn more about the committee so that we're, we're hoping we'll have lots of folks who sign up to join this important work. We're really excited to offer these two opportunities and to work with the community to move reading ahead in Reading. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hardy, and we look forward to moving that forward with you all. Shift gears a little bit into some community shout outs. The first is uh, shout out to the entire community. A couple of weeks ago, we reached out for support in some of filling some of the vacancies that uh, we felt have uh, impacted the student experience for us. And those were um, substitute teaching positions and also food service positions. Uh, we've been overwhelmed by the support uh, that we've received from families and caregivers across the community. As an example, we've received over 25 applications from families to serve as substitute teachers. And we are in the process now of onboarding uh, all of those family members to serve as substitutes here in the Reading Public Schools. So a huge thank you to all the community members who helped step up. Uh, if you are also interested but have not yet reached out, please contact our HR director directly, Michelle Roach, who can speak with you about some of the vacant positions and ways that you can help support and close the gaps that we have right now in some of our positions. So thank you to the entire community. Also like to give a thank you and a shout out to all of the girls, elementary age girls who are involved in our Girls on the Run program. Uh, so you'll see some photos here from the Girls on the Run program. And Girls on the Run is a national nonprofit organization. The program is a physical activity based youth development program for girls in grades three through five. Girls on the Run focuses on teaching the girls social, emotional, physical, and behavioral skills uh, to successfully navigate life, future life experiences and both Birch Meadow and Wood End have hosted Girls in the Run programs this year. The program is two days a week after school and practices include lessons on topics such as empathy, choosing a good friend, positive self-talk, finding balance in your life, and many more. Each practice incorporates a lesson, a warm-up, which provides the, girl with the, the girls with the opportunity to practice a new skill, 
time to practice running and building our endurance, and a cool down reflection time at the end. Each session, the girls choose a community impact uh, project. This season, the girls chose to make placemats and lunch bags for Meals on Wheels. And Dr. Styes and Dr. Hardy were able to observe this activity in action this week. So the girls exit the program able to recognize their strengths and knowledge uh, and how to be intentional in decision making, embracing differences and finding strength in those connections, expressing joy, optimism, and gratitude through words, thoughts, and actions, nurturing their physical, emotional, and spiritual health, leading with an open heart and assuming positive intent, and standing up for themselves and others. And we like to say that the uh, girls in the run teams from Woodend and Birch close out their season with a 5K race at Hormel Stadium in Medford on November 20th, and that begins at 8.30. So all in the community are welcome to come out and to cheer on uh, our, our elementary age students as they participate in this final activity and run in this 5K. So best of luck to all the students involved. I'd also like to give a special shout out to Allison, Ms. Allison Kramer, Ms. Caitlin Coy, Ms. Erin Hussey, and Ms. Catherine Breen, who are our coaches uh, who've done a great job this season with our students. We'd also like to give a shout out to uh, Ms. Diane Finnegan. Uh, for those who don't know Ms. Finnegan, she is the Administrative Secretary at Parker. Uh, and congratulations to Ms. Finnegan for winning the Colleen Barrett Award for Administrative Excellence, which is a coveted nationwide honor. Uh, this is the Admin Award's most prestigious award and is presented to the administrator that best demonstrates the following qualities. High proficiency, values that reflect the organization, passionate commitment to the organization's cause and purpose, a deep commitment to legendary customer service, both internally and externally, and the heart for employee advocacy and making sure the company always does right by its employees. So a huge honor uh, and recognition for Ms. Finnegan and for our entire Parker community. I'd like to share a little bit more about Ms. Finnegan, and this comes directly from a letter of recommendation written by Ms. Shanklin, uh, the Parker principal, which reads the following. Ms. Finnegan is an invaluable member of the Parker Middle School administrative team. On a daily basis, she goes above and beyond the call of duty, showing enthusiasm and passion for supporting the mission of our school. Most recently, a district level administrator shared with me that Ms. Finnegan is the most effective, competent school administra administrative assistant she has ever worked with. In closing, Ms. Finnegan is my right hand, confidant, coworker, and friend. She has high expectations of herself, which is an excellent model for others. Um, and I also like my favorite quote here. Uh, it says, at times, she can be found pulling weeds in the front, of, on the front walk of the school. So again, a huge shout out to Ms. Finnegan for her excellent work and leadership at the Parker and in our Reading community. I'd like to close with a shout out to all of our uh, RMHS athletic teams that continue to participate in state tournaments uh, and continue to compete at the highest level. So our swim team, cross country team, football team, field hockey team, and boys soccer team, so, and our cheerleading team. And we wish you all the best as you continue to uh, move forward in the state tournament. We are here cheering you on, which gives me the chance, speaking of the cheerleading team, give a special recognition to our cheerleading team. The RMHS cheerleaders performed their routine at the Middlesex League competition and came in first place for the Liberty Division for the second year in a row. The team is headed to regionals on Sunday, November 14th at Bill Ricca High School. We'd also like to give a shout out to our coaches, Ms. Keeley and Ms. Coffey, for their excellent work with our student athletes. So, Great work to all of our uh, fall teams. We wish you the best here. Go Rockets. So to close, we hope you had a great week. We look forward to another great week next week. Go Rockets.